given what you know about the principles of neuroplasticity, how can we as normal people use this knowledge to change our lives? I know this is, you can go hours on this, but I guess give us the big points. Okay, here are some of the most powerful tools we know to take advantage of what I call positive brain plasticity, that growth uh, part of uh, plasticity. And I start with the, the form that I've studied the most, with, which is actually physical activity. Did you know that every single time you move your body, taking a walk, walking to your car, walking, take a walk down the, down the block, um, you infuse your brain with a whole bunch of neurochemicals, including dopamine and serotonin and noradrenaline. I like to call it the bubble bath of neurochemicals. And that is not only going to give you um, better mood because dopamine and serotonin, um, that's what uh, antidepressants do. They, they up those levels of neurotransmitters. You're getting that naturally with movement, but it also increases things called growth factors. And those growth factors go to um, another brain structure, which is my favorite brain structure, the hippocampus, critical for memory. And it will actually help grow brand new brain cells in the hippocampus, making your memory work better. And, you know, everybody needs a better, better memory, whatever you're doing, a podcast producer, a neuroscientist, uh, we all need a better memory. So um, that is, uh, it does many more things, but that is something that really intrigues so many people. So any type of movement, you mean? For mood, just a 10-minute walk can improve. Um, 10-minute walk has been shown to decrease anxiety and depression levels, which uh, everybody needs today. Um, to get the growth in the hippocampus and, and growth in other brain areas, your prefrontal cortex, important for focus and attention, is also a brain area that is improved with, with exercise. Brain cells don't grow that looks like it's uh, synapses, connections between already present brain cells are growing in the prefrontal cortex. And to get that, we know that the best way to do that is um, do a form of movement that gets your heart rate up. So do a power walk, of course, soul cycle or running or, you know, dancing that gets your heart rate up. Anything that gets your heart rate up, we know is effective at um, getting those growth factors up to uh, grow your brain. Amazing. Okay. And I guess, are there, I want you to kind of keep going. Are there other exercises or lifestyle changes that people can implement for like brain health and well being? Yeah. Movement is one. That's not surprising. It's good for so many things, your heart, but it's so good for your brain. I'm going to go next to one that is deficient in so many of us, and that is sleep. Sleep, good eight to nine hours of sleep is what is really recommended, um, is so important for a number of different reasons for your overall brain health and, and also for brain plasticity. Um, number one, during sleep and those the, the long, good uh, uh, eight to nine hours of sleep is when all of the metabolites in your brain gets cleaned out. So imagine if the garbage man doesn't come anymore. That's exactly what happens in your brain if you don't sleep regularly, long, regular sleep sessions. So you get gunk and metabolites built up in your brain, not good for overall health. Also, um, when you sleep and particularly when you dream is when your memories that you have encoded during that day get, get strengthened. So you wonder why, oh, I can't remember anything. I'm so sleepy. I haven't done. It's because you, you cut off with your sh short sleep cycle your the time during the day that your memories are being strengthened. And it also is, sleep is a great time and is essential time to help improve your emotional regulation. Anybody um, feel grouchy and not able to control their um, little outbursts uh, when they don't sleep well? Emotional regulation is highly dependent on good sleep. So it could be considered easy. All of us who've tried to change our sleep cycles know that it takes some work, but I can tell you that that and changing my exercise regime are the top two things that I've done in my life that I have noticed considerable, clear, long lasting difference in my brain health. But that's not all. New, I'm a professor uh, and, and dean at the College of Arts and Science at New York University. Learning, new learning, being challenged by new learning um, is great. And everybody says, oh, Sudoku. So 
is that really challenging? I mean, <laughs> you, you know the sequence. Um, I'm talking about learning a new language, learning right. how to play chess, doing those strategy things where you really have to use your brain in a new way. That has been shown to uh, result in positive brain plasticity. And then I'm going to turn to the one everybody asks me about food. What kind of food mm. should I eat? You know, how many, what are the supplements that you recommend? And I am a um, back to basics girl when it comes to food. I like to eat all my nutrients. And we know that the uh, diet with the most science behind it for your body and your brain is the Mediterranean diet. Mm. Completely makes sense. Healthy fats, not a lot of red meat, colorful veggies, fruits, but also balanced. If you eat a beautifully colorful diet, you know, I'm not a, I'm not an MD and you don't have, you know, underlying health conditions. Um, you should be able to get beautiful nutrition that way. And certainly beautiful nutrition for your brain. Right. Are you about also taking vitamins or supplements for brain health? I know that's like a, a thing as well. Yeah. You know, I think, again, I think if you are eating a good balanced diet, uh, unless you're, look, everybody's a little bit deficient in, in, um, in vitamin D because of the sunscreen, which is also important not to get skin cancer. Also, as we get older, I'm taking, um, um, calcium supplements because that, that is good for your bones, but also for your brain as well. I'm not saying no, no supplements are good. There are, there are ones that have a lot of benefit, but I would say that um, all of the antioxidants in all of the colorful fruit, like blueberries and blackberries, really, really good for your brain. And I always like to promote the real food rel relative to the uh, supplement that you take. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm totally on, on, on that side as well, like just eating your nutrients and food as medicine. Okay, so you brought up something I wanted to ask you about, like learning, learning new languages. I, I love learning new languages. And something that you hear is that, oh, it's, it, it's hard to learn a new language when you're an adult. It's so much easier when you're a child. Like, is it like how much of that is true versus can we really do anything right with our brains as we get older? Yeah. <laughs> Cause like, I feel like we limit ourselves, right? We limit ourselves thinking, Oh, it's like, it's, it's impossible. I shouldn't even start. No, no, it's absolutely not impossible. Is it easier for a three or four year old to pick up languages? Yes, it is because that, that they are at the brain development stage that was created for learning, you know, verbal languages. Does it get harder? Yes, it does. It is absolutely not impossible. And I think it's getting easier and easier with all of the online tools that we have to do short little bursts of practice. I also think Netflix is helpful because yeah. I now watch so many more series in so many different languages. Not that I'm actively trying to learn a new language, but I do speak French. And so, so mm -hmm. having all those French series easily accessible so I can listen to it and not look at the subtitles to really my, make myself work. So helpful. So I think compared to, you know, 20, 25 years ago, there are many more tools to learn. And frankly, the best, anybody who's learned a language knows that immersion works. And okay, so I can't go live in France right now, but I could find a French friend and then make a promise that we're only going to speak French together. That is the best way uh, to learn. So it is not impossible. Uh, it takes some work, but there are tried and true techniques and um, there are lots of tools out there to help. Yeah. So you're saying our brain, even as an adult, just has all the capabilities to do it. It's just a matter of like resources and tools. Absolutely. And practice. You know, one thing I am an expert in is memory. How does memory work? How do you make your memory work? And, and memorizing is a, such a key part of learning a new language. Number one rule in, um, in trying to learn something new and make it stick, repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. You know, some of these tools that we know work won't work for language. Novelty is, is helpful, so it may not be the best for uh, language. Association can help. Because um, if you build on themes of particular, you know, uh, vocabulary topics that might, um, and that's just a language learning uh, category. Emotional resonance also helps people learn. So my secret that I will reveal is that I learned French really well because I had a French boyfriend when I lived in France. That was my emotionally, you know, charged secret to really learn. And um, 
I learned how to flirt really well in French because I had a, had a goal right there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Something else you talked about was li- putting your brain in an enriched environment. Can you go deeper into what that means, right? How can we create that enriched environment in our lives? Yeah. That brings up another topic that I haven't ta- talked about yet. So we talked about physical activity, um, giving, giving your brain that physical activity is great. But you know, the other thing that is so good for your brain and for longevity overall is social connectedness. We have, according to our Surgeon General, there is an epidemic of loneliness in the world right now. And that is true. And so that makes all the social connections that we could make um, even more important. So um, having those And I don't mean online. I mean, it's wonderful that we can do this on Zoom. I'm not (laughs) dissing that in any way. But I also make sure to have person to person, you know, connections. I stay connected with my friends. I, I, I make sure that I have those social connections because they always make me feel so much better. And we know that our brains evolved and are wired to, um, to help us, uh, um, interpret our, our in person social connections. And that is such an important thing, a really, really important part of an enriched environment. 